Kath has asked me to talk about peace as a fruit of the Spirit. And as we know, peace is right at the heart of the gospel. The gospel is the gospel of peace. And, um, you know, Jesus has come to reconcile us to the Father, to God, so that we can have peace with God and actually enjoy the peace of God, his very nature with us, and also peace with our neighbour. We also know that um, it's this absence of relationship with God and uh, broken relationships of human beings that can cause such anxiety and stress in our lives. So Jesus, I want to just take one verse from John 14, 27, uh, because this su t subject is so big. I think if we can just focus on one verse. And uh, this is Jesus with his disciples just a few hours before he is taken away um, to be tried and tortured and then executed uh, falsely. And he ministers to his disciples. He's not trying to seek relief for himself, but he ministers to them in their anxiety, in their stress, uh, that they're going to lose their leader and uh, their, their hope of the coming kingdom. Um, in Israel um, is all vanishing as it becomes more and more obvious that the, the Jewish authorities um, are going to hand Jesus over to the political leaders um, to be done away with. So anyway, in this context, <laughs> uh, which is not a very peaceful context, Jesus ministers his peace to his disciples. He says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So my first point is that it's the Lord loves to give his peace to his disciples. And his disciples are those who choose to follow and obey him. And he gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. So to appropriate the gift of God, um, it's about trusting and obeying the Lord. And he loves to give. It's a free gift. His peace is a free gift. His very self, his very nature. Um, and is different from the world because we get peace from the world. which is an absence of trouble um, where we can be on holiday or we can enjoy a drink or good food, uh, a great movie. You know, all, all wonderful things. But there is a price to pay for those things. And... Um, often there is a there's a kickback I mean it costs us in terms of time and energy and effort and money <laughs> to acquire um, the peace of the world but the peace of God is a free gift and there is no negative kickback the peace of God is freely given from our loving Heavenly Father and just in this chapter I counted 22 references to the Father and uh, it's Jesus' love for the Father and desire to, to do his will that enables him to have peace when he is committed to do the Father's will within such turmoil and stress. So it's different from the world. It actually enables the peace of God, empowers and enables us to face the storm and to go through the storm, conflict and even physical torture and pain and rejection. And this peace can enable us to, to not run away from the world and its demands and uh, its pushback and rejection, but to um, go through those things without losing the peace of God. Um, it's a bit like a, the ocean. You've got waves. When the storm comes, the waves become huge. But deeper down, there is that abiding peace. And we um, have inherited that peace as disciples of Jesus Christ in our core. Um, we might be anxious and worried on the surface and even afraid like the disciples. Uh, but deeper down, we have the peace of God um, in our core. The Lord is with us. We are in the Father. He is in us. We are in the Spirit and the Spirit is in us. We are in the Lord Jesus Christ and he is with us. And um, it's just remembering we don't have to get into that place. We are in that place as a free gift. We need to just remember it 
and uh, know that in the core of our being we have been given the peace of God. But those temptations to worry are normal to every human being and the disciples were certainly worried. Uh, but Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. This is a command and do not be afraid. You know, all these people coming to arrest their leader and he is uh, ministering his peace and commanding them not to be afraid. So how do we do that? And when the pressure is on, when the rejection is there, when the relationships are broken, uh, there is a temptation to fight or run away, um, just as Peter did. Both of those things, he <laughs> chopped off the soldier's ear and uh, he denied Jesus three times. Uh, but it is by coming back to the Lord and waiting on him, especially in those times of great testing, uh, we need to be with the Lord and regain our peace, regain his peace and our peace with him and to love the Father and to receive the Father's love. And that is done, as far as I understand, uh, in that uh, secret place uh, where you close the door and uh, you realise it's not the glass of wine or the beer or the curry or the film or the video game or the distractions of this world but it is the presence of God. And uh, we, we can enjoy the presence of God uh, just by remembering him, lifting our hearts to him and uh, enjoying his peace. Just letting those uh, stresses and the worries take second place, that they're not preeminent in our mind, but the Lord Jesus Christ is preeminent, that we re-enthrone him as Lord of our heart, of our minds, of our bodies, and uh, we commit ourselves afresh each day to do his will and to face the storms that the next day will bring uh, with his peace. And um, yeah, he promises to be with us. And uh, yeah, that is our inheritance, his peace. So just reminding you, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Jesus is promises tribulation in this world. We will go through hard trials. We will uh, see economic uh, hardships and uh, violence and wars and rumors and wars and famines and plagues. These, these are normal, um, but the Lord is with us. And when we put him first, he will see us through all these things in Jesus name. Thanks. God bless.